fucking if, 70 if you years. get up in the morning and you stand in front of a full length mirror without your kit on and you have a look and everything looks fine you're tracking oh you we, don't have to count your oh, calories yeah, yeah, or yeah. Your macros or any of that mm-hmm. you are keeping an eye on your physiology absolutely yeah so you are tracking yes you're just yeah doing okay. it in a way that works yes i am you now understand the mechanisms You've found a methodology that works for you individually, mm-hmm. and you know you've got enough experience with it that you know when it's going awry. Yeah, I would say it's probably fair to say that we probably eat seventy to eighty percent meat most of the time, right? Yeah, if not, like some days it's a hundred percent. But yeah, don't most y'all of the care time, about the environment? What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, fuck <laughs> it, let it burn, destroy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think there was a song about it. The roof, the roof, the roof. <laughs> Bart, I'm 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 curious about this. Um, so, f- with with an example of Lane Norton, where do you think he and his messaging is going wrong? Because he's actually an individual that I think he's great at having a nuanced approach and messaging when it does come to calories in, calories out. He's a big fan of fiber, big fan of a varied diet. Um, mm-hmm. He. He seems, I mean, we've talked so many times, his approach does seem very reasonable and it does follow through with that calories in, calories out paradigm. Is there yeah. something wrong? Or if there is something wrong with what he's putting forward, where is it? Okay. Lane is the holder of a PhD in nutritional science. Mm-hmm. And he has, I think, something like maybe a dozen or slightly more peer reviewed publications to his name. I think he worked in academia for less than 10 years and now he's self-employed. Good, you know, good luck to him. That's fine. Um, as am I these days, fine. His apparent credentials stack up, but it's not until he opens his mouth that you find huge holes in his understanding or his messaging or whatever. And sure, I might be straw manning him a bit for, for clicks and for views. Why not? You know, it's not like I've never been straw manned myself. But when Lane Norton says things like the first law of thermodynamics states that mass is conserved, straight away, there's an absolute opportunity for me to jump all over the boy. Because number one, the first law of thermodynamics says nothing remotely similar to that. And secondly, the reason it doesn't say that is because mass is not conserved. <laughs> it is not conserved. He's wrong on that completely. Um in, in a context of in everyday life, you might be right, because when the human body processes carbohydrates, fats, amino acids, and alcohol, that mass does not disappear. So he's right in that way, but he's not, again, he's not giving us the full information and he's presenting it in a way that gives me an opportunity to go, <laughs> look, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and so obviously I jump all over that because that's what we do here in terms of this kind of let's let's have some niggle between us, let's let's start some shit, let's you know he said niggle. go for the mm-hmm. He said niggle, there we <laughs> go. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um so mm-hmm. yes, I'll do that. I believe that the contention that calories in calories out is a predictable valid robust and useful tool for joe public to use in order to make changes to their body composition through dietary intervention i believe that to be a badly flawed argument i believe that to be false i believe that on average that will not work precisely because it's only half a story And you need absolutely to understand the very, very vital role of the endocrine system, the hormonal system, inflammatory systems, et cetera, in what a person's eventual body composition is. And there are many examples of times when calories in, calories out, standalone as a statement, because that's what it is. Calories in, calories out implies that there is nothing else to worry about. Eat less, move more. That's what calories in, calories out says. And unless you clearly state that that is not correct and there is nuance and you need to do several things correctly, then you're not giving the full story. Now, I believe Lane makes an attempt to give us more nuance. I I genuinely, I'll give him that. But 
He then says things like fiber is indicated. No, it isn't. He will say a balanced diet is a good thing. If it fits your macros, he'll say. No, lame, mistake, wrong, false. He will say things like, you should avoid saturated fat because of the cholesterol issue. No, wrong again, false. Hey, Project family, how's it going? Now, Piedmontese beef is a company we've been eating literally for years now because they have some of the best beef on the market, tons of cuts, tons of different types of beef. Check them out. Andrew, where can they get it? At Piedmontese.com. That's P-I-E-D-M-O-N-T-E-S-E.com. And at checkout, enter promo code POWER to save 25% off your entire order. And if your order is $150 or more, you get free two-day shipping. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. <laughs> so... Yes, he's got credentials. Yes, he can present himself as credible when he wants to. But half of what he says is demonstrably incorrect. And as such, given the way I've chosen to present myself on YouTube, the way I've chosen to be combative, abrupt, abusive, rude, obviously I'm going to jump on those things and point to those things immediately. I'm not here to make mates with Lane Norton. Um, I'm here to, to, to suggest to Lane that if he actually had any testicular fortitude whatsoever, he would face me man to man and have a discussion with me online, live on camera, wherein we can work out who it is that knows their stuff here out of the two of us. And he's refused on several occasions to do so. Instead of dealing with the arguments that I make, which are actually unassailable, that's why he won't engage, Instead, he tries to undercut me by claiming things like, for example, I never did work in academia. He claims that the university I claim to lecture at or to be a professor at doesn't have a record of me, etc. These are all lies. Purely to avoid and to save face instead of actually fronting up for the discussion on the topic matter. We can even do it politely. I don't even need to swear at him. I do that for my stick on my channel, but if you'd rather have a discussion with me sensibly and academically, I'll tear the boy to bits. There's no two ways about it. People just assume that I'm, un I'm not capable of doing that with a real genuine academic purely because I behave a buffoon on my channel. So they think, therefore, oh, that must be the only tool I've got. It's a sucker punch. Why so, do you th there you go. <clears throat> Why do you think uh, we applied the law of ther thermodynamics to uh, human diet? And is that what it was originally for? And like, and how long have we been doing this for? Right. Okay. The first law of thermodynamics is a case limited example of the practical application or upshot of the law of conservation of energy, as outlined first, probably by. Emily Noether, more than anybody else, I would suggest. It was designed and formulated by folks who were wanting to understand the relationship between heat energy and the capacity to encapsulate that heat energy in a closed system and use the force of that heat energy to translate that energy into physical movement, kinetic movement, of a piston in a closed system in order to drive a train down a steam train line. That's what thermodynamics was about. Thermo, heat, dynamics, movement. So originally had nothing to do with a human being. Nothing whatsoever. And the first law of thermodynamics being a case limited example, by definition, absolutely demands that its dictates, which are mathematical, and not words, by the way. So when you, often I say to people, they say, oh, the first law of thermodynamics, blah, blah, blah. And I say, great, tell me what that is. Quote it for me. You know more about this than I do. You're the expert. I'm just an idiot here, clearly. You tell me, what is the first law of thermodynamics? I don't want to put you on the spot, guys, but oh, yeah. I'm betting my bottom dollar, you guys couldn't do it. If I said to you, what is the first law of thermodynamics? Quote it. Because almost nobody does know. Almost nobody knows. I'll just take a guess. I don't know, have any idea. But yeah, go, go matter can neither be created nor destroyed. I don't know. That's what I was going to say. Right. Right. Say right. that again. Sorry, Mark. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed. Right. You got that directly from Lane Norton, didn't you? I don't know where I saw it, but yeah. <laughs> nah, that's, that's just something you hear. Yeah, that's, that's what something you hear, you hear a lot. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I was going to say the same is, thing. But, that is yeah. a statement of a so-called law of conservation, 
called the conservation of matter, which is false. Matter is not conserved. In physics, that is a falsehood. Anyone that knows physics understands that. The thing that is conserved, the quantity that is conserved regarding matter in some way is actually energy. Matter is a form of energy, a condensed form of energy, actually. But that's for another day. That's not the important point here. The important point is that the law, the first law of thermodynamics is a case-limited mathematical statement regarding certain aspects of the law of conservation of energy in a set context. That context being a closed thermodynamic system. By definition, that is the requirement. Absolutely. Because the first law of thermodynamics says delta U is equal to Q minus W. That's all it says. Nothing else. There are no implications. It doesn't invoke any law of anything. It makes a clear statement. And it says the internal energy of a closed thermodynamic system, the change in internal energy in that system is equal to the specific heat capacity of that system minus any work done by that system. In other words, put heat into a system and you can cause that system to do work. Do work in a system and you will produce heat in that system. That's the interaction. The statement of the first law of thermodynamics makes no statement whatsoever about mass, precisely because it is case limited to a closed thermodynamic system that is incapable of allowing mass to cross its border. Example, a closed bomb calorimeter. Human beings are not a closed bomb calorimeter. We can exchange mass across our system boundaries. I'll give you an example of that. I've just breathed out a bunch of mass. How much calories was in that mass that I just breathed out? No idea. First law of thermodynamics does not apply to an open thermodynamic system. We're done. People that don't understand that should stop saying the first law of thermodynamics says because they don't know what it says. And Lane Norton does not know what it says because he thinks it says mass is conserved. It says nothing remotely similar to that. One of us is an actual scientist with an actual history of doing a significant amount of science and the other one is Lane Norton. Real, real quick question. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> When I pay attention to a lot of a lot of these things, the thing that I guess the thing that I care about is when applied to the individual, is this going to be something that is going to help them get to their goals, or is it is it not right? And there, there's right that is so general. But at the end of the day, I think of like in practice, will this work and will this help? I get yep. the law of thermodynamics thing. It's 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 apparently it's incorrect, right? But, I mean, and it's incorrect, and it's also communicated by a lot of other people, okay? So yeah. it, it's wrong. Yeah. But I immediately be, I just immediately think, why, why does this matter? Like, why is, why is this important? So what? Be, 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 but it, yeah. do, it matters because it's wrong. I'm, I'm not saying it, it's, yeah. it's not, yeah. it doesn't matter. But, I mean, in the larger context of helping somebody get from point A to point B, you yeah. know, that's where I'm just like, okay. I get it, okay. but why? Right. Let me kind of encapsulate that in the best way that I can. At the end of the day, there are all sorts of people in the world that will offer you advice on all sorts of topics. Mm -hmm. It is up to you. It is your responsibility with the best of your ability and your intelligence and, and the things that you've got going for you and your ability to research things for yourself or whatever. It is up for you to decide who you want to listen to. Who makes sense and who doesn't make sense? Will a straight out statement, calories in, calories out, eat less and move more, will that assist people, some people, any people, in losing weight? That sure, will not work some people most. will succeed doing that. Yeah. Sure. Is it predictable? Is it definite? Will it absolutely work without question? No, there is a question that it might not for you. A, because you'll be unable to accurately track your calories in. B, because you'll be unable to accurately track your calories out. And C, because you don't understand the interaction between energy in and energy out as that relates to your endocrine system, your hormonal system, and your inflammatory system.
Peeps, we love bringing you all this fitness information, and we also want to help bring that information to more people. So if you could help us out, hit that rev subscribe button, and then hit the notification bell, and we'll continue to bring you the heat. And I won't whisper in your ear. <laughs> Talk to you guys later.